you go to the dentist with a bad tooth, he'll pull it out, there'll be a gap. If you travel to Southern Ireland, between two mountains, there's the Gap of Dunlow. But during Christmas 1996, there's the Great Eastern Gap here at Colchester. Trains for Anglia Railways and Great Eastern have come to a standstill for a number of days as they widen the, the gap, the bridge, that carries the roadway from Colchester to Great Hawksley and to Burgholt and beyond. CHTV's cameraman, Chris Dowsett, captures some of the activity during the Christmas to New Year period, 1996 to 1997. If you had a Meccano set for Christmas, you know a little bit about construction, but somebody who knows a lot more about construction is Jim Wiley from Jackson Group. Jim, it's been construction since, what, 10 o'clock on Christmas Eve down here at North Station. That's How's right. it going? Oh, it's going very well. Um, the guys worked incredibly hard, and we've had 50 to 60 people on 12-hour shifts working right through. And as you said, we started about 10 o'clock on Christmas Eve, and the demolition took place in the early hours of Christmas morning, exposing the new abutment, which will take the new bridge. I mean, you understand what we're doing, of course. We're putting in a dual carriageway, fundamentally widening the bridge from 15 metres to 25 metres. And it's all got to be done, and so the rail users are back using the railway by 5 o'clock on Monday morning, and we'll do it. <laughs> Let's go back in time, though, Jim. When did the planning start for this? It must have been many months back. Well, as far as we're concerned, we moved on site in May, and you're absolutely right to say, talk about the planning, because without good planning, this job wouldn't be going as smoothly as it is at the moment. A lot, a lot of planning has gone into this, minute detail, so that the right equipment, the right people, the right skills are here at exactly the time we want them. If you've got too many people at the wrong time, it's as bad as having too many things go going on without the right staff here, you know, you've got to get it right. How was the old bridge lifted out and what equipment was used? It was cut out and it was lifted using the same lifting equipment as we're using to put the new bridge in. Unusually in a way for this sort of contract, we generally would lift in beams from above, in other words using a crane and, and drop them down into position. But because the five days of this contract didn't allow us to remove the overhead cables, this being an electric track, we weren't able to do it that way. The cables are, of course, dead. They're, they're not live cables. But we couldn't take them down and get them out of the way. So we removed the old bridge, lifted it off its old positioning, pulled it out and put it onto uh, jack-up points that you can see on the side here. Um, and then came in and lifted and moved the new ones in. And that's what we did this morning. We put two uh, the lines in, one bridge, and then this afternoon we moved the second bridge in, which has got three lines in. And that's some 550 tonnes or so in weight. 
Now, the bridge has been here some time, propped on scaffolding. Has it had rail track on it? Has it, the, the, the actual lines are on the bridge already, are they? Yes, absolutely. And, of course, the, the platforms as well. So they, they're, they're built up here as complete units. There's a very interesting lifting jack. How many wheels has this rather interesting device got? 120, somebody told me. Oh, I don't know. I haven't counted. <laughs> it's like a centipede. It's a, uh, so presumably hundreds of centipede. It must be about that, yes. And quite amazingly maneuverable, too. It's all done hydraulically. And, of course, that bed then moves in and the jacks lift the unit up so that you, we can get exactly the position we need and then lower it to, again, exactly the position required. Well, that's very specialised equipment. Where does that come from? It's, we're using a company called Econofreight. Uh, they provide the equipment. I mean, it's the sort of thing that's used to move very heavy plant and uh, chemical works and that sort of thing. So it, it's specialist kit and operated by very specialist people. Now, is this something new for the Jackson Group, uh, doing a rail bridge, or is this part of your normal construction work? Well, if I can get it right, Jackson Civil Engineering is the operating company. Jackson Group, of course, is the parent. So these guys are civil engineers. Yes, it is unusual in that we don't do these sort of things very often, but it, it's not the first time we've done it either. Um, we did a bridge at Nebworth last winter, and about three years ago now, a similar problem with a different solution uh, down at Greenhithe in Kent, where we actually slid a bridge into position. We'd built it absolutely in line, and then we pushed it in on tracks. So we're, we're getting fairly expert at these sort of rail jobs, and we do, we do a great deal of work for rail track in any event. Have you been working very closely with rail track on the demolition of the old bridge and, and the facilities that have to go in with the new bridge? Yes, I mean, th this is a team effort um, right the way through. I mean, we, without very close liaison with everybody from rail track, not only people here, of course, on site, but there's also the management of rail track. We, we work with them. We always work very closely with all our clients, and it's a good working relationship. If there was a problem, and if the railways didn't open on Monday, is there a damage clause they might be claiming from you? I suspect there is, but I'm an, ever an optimist, and that's because I know the ability of our people. That won't happen. It will open, I can assure you, in time for the commuter traffic on Monday morning. Oh,